When we talk about Active Directory groups, we're usually talking about two kinds of groups, distribution groups and security groups. Managing distribution lists and security groups is a mission-critical task for just about any IT organization. Active Directory distribution groups work with your email client to define who is included on group messages, while security groups are used to control access to resources. Those resources could be hardware, SharePoint sites, application folders, or a host of other uses. Simple so far, right? Distribution groups are for emailing people and security groups provide access. Black and white, cut and dried, or maybe not. Let's go through them briefly to understand the types better. Distribution groups are designed to combine users together so that you can send emails collectively to a group. Active Directory distribution groups are designed to be used for email specifically and cannot be granted Windows permissions. Objects in Active Directory that can have permissions granted to them are known as security principles. For example, users are an example of a security principle because a user can be granted rights. Security groups are also security principles. Distribution lists are not security principles, however, because rights cannot be granted to a distribution group. Why? Because the Active Directory schema does not give distribution groups this ability. Used with care, Active Directory security groups provide an efficient way to assign access to resources on your network. When using security groups, you can assign user rights. User rights are assigned to Active Directory security groups to determine what members of that group can do within the scope of the domain or forest. User rights are automatically assigned to built-in security groups at the time Active Directory is installed to help administrators define a person's administrative role in their domain. Permissions are assigned to the security groups in the Active Directory for shared resources. This is different from user rights because user rights apply across an entire domain versus permissions that are directed to a specific entity. Permissions determine who can access the resources and the level of access, such as full control or read-only. Characteristics of Mail-Enabled Security Groups Mail-Enabled Security Groups are used for granting access to resources such as SharePoint and emailing notifications to users. They function the same as regular security groups, except that they cannot be dynamically managed through as their Active Directory and cannot contain devices. It includes the ability to send email to all members of the group. Mail-enabled security groups can be added to a team. As you know, as each user object collects more and more SIDs, they're going to experience decreased performance due to token bloat. Their logins will be slower, and at more than 1,015 tokens, they won't be able to log in entirely. Of course, this makes it even more important that you have some sort of lifecycle on your security groups. Pretty much any security group should be monitored to make sure the resource protect still exists and the membership is current. But it becomes even more crucial if every group is a security group. When Active Directory becomes too significant a burden to bear, it's time to upgrade your life with Group ID. Join companies like Disney, Nike, Splunk, Hershey's, FedEx, American Red Cross, the Federal Reserve, and the Center for Autism, who all rely on Group ID to keep their systems up-to-date and secure.